dust or an alteration. But for Opportunity's first ratting to work, the right rock and exact placement on that rock are crucial. With dust building up on the solar panels and Martian winter approaching, the pressure's on. That spot for ratting then has to be chosen now. And I mean literally in the next, uh, well, it should be chosen in the next, uh, it should be chosen in the next hour. Over two days, Garavan is in a frantic search for the latest and best images. For the scientists to hit gold, the rat has to work just right. If the rock target is too bumpy or the rover too far away, the grind won't go deep enough. My stomach is uh, starting to turn into a uh, veritable Gordian knot, untied only by success. As the principal conductor of the Scientific Symphony, Steve Squire's role is to make sure all the instruments are ready to play their part. Okay, you guys prepared to tell me if you're happy? We're happy. We're happy. You gotta see this. All I need is we're happy. You're we're happy. happy. Good. But there's one more thing I gotta tell you that I love. Charles Dickens is here. The Kittrick Middle Rat. That's what we're gonna call it. <laughs> okay. It's just chance. Yes. All right, very good. So we're on it right, right away. Excellent. That's what I want here. It's 20 minutes to the downlink assessment meeting, and we haven't even selected the Kittrick Middle Rat. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're happy. They're happy. Yeah. So you should be happy, and I should be happy too. Yeah. With strategy agreed, it's time for tactics planning the next Sol's activities in detail. In a carefully designed room with high-tech displays around a giant U-shaped table, they begin another daily ritual, the SAW, or Science Operations Working Group. That would be a lively meeting, though. <laughs> Some people want to get this done, go and get out of the crater, and other people want to spend a little bit more time here doing a really in-depth uh, detail of this. Each instrument team presents their best estimate of how much time, power, and computer memory their observations will need. Rover planners use sophisticated software to integrate and translate requests into watt hours and time to execute. During the spirit anomaly, they almost lost the rover by leaving too many files in the onboard computer. So now they know they also have to be careful about data storage. Finally, they have a plan which JPL engineers turn into commands to send up to the rovers. All right, I think I've got it. I am so focused on just getting this ratting done. I, I, I don't care if we find chili under there. <laughs> I don't care. I just want to make that thing work. Next Sol on Mars, next day on Earth. This is it. This is, this is. Aliens have landed on Mars, <laughs> and we are it. The first of so many homes. <laughs> And so little time. Garavan and colleagues are back to see if it all worked. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, this is huge. This is huge. Steve Squires and key members of the science team grab planes to Washington. The results warrant a press conference. There are two puzzles that we've been working on, and we've got the answer to one of them. The other one we're still working on. One question is, were these wonderful layered rocks actually laid down in liquid water? We don't have an answer for that one yet. We're working on it. We're making some headway. John's going to talk about this a little bit more. We've got some tantalizing clues in that direction. We may have something for you in another week to two weeks. The second question is, were these rocks altered by liquid water? And the answer to that, we believe definitively, is yes. When we looked at this rock close up, we found out that in some places it is shot through with some very weird looking holes. It's as if a bunch of objects sort of the size and shape of pennies were once embedded in the rock and then went away. These are actually familiar forms from certain kinds of rocks on Earth. What happens is when crystals grow within rocks, if you have water in solution and crystals precipitate from that, either the water's chemistry changes and they dissolve away or they're eroded away and you leave little tabular holes, these tabular voids behind. And so these things we think are probably the molds of crystals that were once there that were precipitated from water. 
The next piece of evidence that we have comes from our alpha particle X-ray spectrometer. And what we found when we first looked at this rock is that it looked like it had an awful lot of